from News Channel 8, this is News Talk with Bruce DePoint. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Mike carter Canine in for Bruce and we begin today's show with a look at transportation proposals in Northern Virginia. Because of the transportation package former Governor Bob McDonnell got through the General Assembly, there is finally some money to spend. Now the question is which projects should get the green light? Here to discuss the proposals, Marty Noe, Chairman of the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority. He's also a member of the Prince William Board of County Supervisors. We're also joined by Nancy Heitschu of the Northern Virginia Transportation Alliance. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Welcome. So as we start the conversation, we also want to mention we welcome your questions, your comments. Which project do you think should be a top priority in Northern Virginia for transportation leaders? Call us on our news line at 703-387-1020. Again, that number is 703-387-1020 at this 10 o'clock hour. We welcome your calls. Let's start with the headline uh, this week. Virginia's Transportation Secretary saying that he wants to extend express toll lanes in Northern Virginia to the D.C. line, converting HOV lanes on 395 into high occupancy toll lanes, uh, accepting easy pass and having variable pricing. Uh, the Secretary says this project would also expand the current two lane roadway into three lanes. So, Nancy, let's start with you. Good move or bad move? I think good move. Um, you know, this proposal actually is um, not new. Um, it was originally proposed as part of the whole 95 corridor um, express lanes package, um, but as you might recall, the um, plans were put in halt um, over some lawsuits on the 395 segment, um, so it's, we're pleased to see Virginia moving forward on this piece um, and the local jurisdictions um, moving forward in tandem with them. Um, I think it will be um, great um, options, provide great options for travelers through that corridor, the additional third lane, as we've seen on 95 and on the 495 with the express lanes, not only um, provides a reliable um, travel time for those users on the express lanes, but also it's improved travel time in the general purpose lane. So I think it's a win-win for all in the corridor. Marty, Nancy mentioned the lawsuits. Uh, that This similar plan was, was halted years ago after Arlington County right. filed a lawsuit. Uh, their concerns, I understand, were about pollution? You know, I, I don't want to speak for Arlington, but I know they had issues uh, dealing with air quality, certainly, and also uh, ensuring that there was appropriate access for transit uh, facilities. I think what uh, part of this new decision uh, is related to is the fact that the lanes that have already been converted, the 95 express lanes, have turned into a really valuable transit corridor, allowing more bus service that's going to need to continue to expand and really can become much more efficient in terms of providing connectivity between folks in Prince William County and Point South up to the Pentagon and Crystal City areas with expanded bus service. So there's a lot of opportunities to both get more cars off the road through transit and also improve air quality um, by, again, having fewer vehicles on the road. What's the timeline for this project? Um, it's 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 going to take some time. There's no question about it, because you're talking about adding exist, uh, new lanes to an existing roadway, reconfiguring exits and things like that. Um, so it's going to take. I, I've I've heard a number about three years. I think I heard the governor this morning, um, about an hour ago, say that they expected that the construction begin in 2017, um, and the project to opening um, for the, for usage in 2019. Are there possible unintended consequences that would come from this? For example, uh, I was reading uh, some concern about what happens at the D.C. line. The 14th Street Bridge, already somewhat of a bottleneck, uh, depending on the time of day. If you go from three lanes to two lanes, suddenly, is that going to make the situation there worse? Yeah, you know, I, I think I think it's a great question. I think one of the biggest challenges we've got in that 395 corridor is uh, access to the Pentagon. No question, there's a lot of people going into the city, um, and, and there's, there's traffic congestion when you hit the 14th Street Bridge now. But hopefully, if we can take some cars off the road as they approach the Pentagon, um, there'll be less congestion in the entire corridor and more opportunity to therefore um, find better ways to configure interchanges and intersections as you enter into the city for those commuters who have to get downtown every day. Let's talk big picture Why we have you both here today. Sure. Uh, the Nor Northern Virginia Transportation Authority, NVTA, mm -hmm. released a survey of local drivers' views on transportation. No big surprise. Nothing. The right. number one issue that drivers are concerned about is reducing trip times, right. uh, followed by making transportation services more affordable. The question is how. So uh, what is the top 
uh, proposal or the low-hanging fruit, if you will, on, on addressing that? Well, so, you know, for the last two years, the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority has finally had revenues that we've been asking for for a generation. Um, millions of dollars of money that can be invested in transportation exclusively in Northern Virginia. That's a really big deal. It's an absolute game changer. Uh, but it becomes really incumbent on us at the authority to invest those funds into those regional projects that can relieve the most congestion. Now, the good news for us is there are a lot of projects to choose from. We will never find ourselves in a situation of saying, is there anything to go spend this money on? Of course, the corollary to that is that there are so many important projects that selecting them can be difficult. We've really tried to focus, and the law really expects us to focus, on those projects that relieve the most congestion relative to cost. Where can we get the biggest bang for the buck? So far, some top priorities for us have been the Route 28 corridor, you know, which is a road that runs from western Prince William County through Manassas, Manassas Park, eastern Prince William County into um, Fairfax and Loudoun. You've got a lot of, lot of different jurisdictions at play there. Um, and there's a lot of demand for improvements to that road. Route 1 in both Fairfax, Prince William, and uh, the town of Dumfries. Again, another corridor where we're making some very serious investments because we know that we can get more asphalt on the ground, get more lane miles opened up very, very quickly. So those projects, when you're talking about those investments mm -hmm. for 28 and Route 1, does that mean just widening the roadway? Well, not just widening. It's a great question. So certainly, add more lanes, but also add more uh, pedestrian and bicycle connectivity. Um, particularly on Route 1 and on sections of Route 28, that road is not just a commuter corridor. It's also hometown Main Street. It's where people go to do their shopping, take their kids to school. Um, and all of this needs to be done with the understanding that we will never be able to put in enough lane miles to handle all of the traffic congestion in Northern Virginia. We have to open up commuter options along all of our major corridors. And we have to recognize that like roads like Route 1 you know, go hand in hand with what's going on in I-95. Route 28 has to be part of a bigger system that involves I-66. So looking at interstates, secondary roads, uh, commuter options for transit, a bicycle, pedestrian, and putting all those pieces together to have a more comprehensive transportation system. And that's what our plan update has really been all about. I and think, Mike, I was going to yeah. say, um, you know, Marty, 28 and Route 1 are, you know, great improvements, but, you know, it's important, too, that we not, um, that we look at kind of the big, um, the bigger road structures that um, impact all those other roads. You know, Marty talked about 95 impacting Route 1. Um, it is very, Route 1 becomes kind of the, um, where people dump off onto when there are problems on 95. So by being able to look at and address um, and fix our congestion problems on 95 and 66, um, that we can then really assess what needs to be done more on Route 1 and Route 50 and 29 in the future, um, putting the cars that want to be on 95 and 66 back on those roads and off of the side streets, and then being able to really address what's going on in the side streets and what improvements need to be so made. So you raised 66. Absolutely. What is the solution? <laughs> Um, you know, I think for outside the Beltway, um, you know, you really have two different 66s. There's inside the Beltway and outside the Beltway. I think outside the Beltway, the proposal that the Commonwealth is putting forward um, that would add um, an additional lane um, from the Beltway out to Route 15 and convert the existing HOV lane and that one additional lane to a new exp uh, to an express lane system, but then also open up three full-time general purpose lanes um, through the whole corridor and, um, and provide um, funding for enhanced transit service in the corridor is really a bold solution that can help us address our transportation needs in that quarter today, but also in the future. You know, it's sort of like on the Beltway. When we had, when we made the widening of the Beltway a few years ago, that really was the final fix for the Beltway. What we do now for 66 is probably going to be the last major improvement that we do, and it needs to be something bold. And I think what they're proposing outside the Beltway is a good solution. Inside the Beltway, um, you know, it's a whole other conversation. It's a very different project. Um, you know, we do have concerns. The Alliance has been a strong proponent of widening inside the Beltway for many years. I think anybody who drives on that roadway or even sits on the Orange Line trains that go through that corridor can see that the need is obvious. Um, the proposal that the McAuliffe administration has put forward, you know, I think um, it's probably the um, important and critical weakness of it is that it assumes that all the traffic congestion on 66 and 7 Beltway happens during the rush hour time period, when in fact the worst congestion, congestion actually occurs on the weekends and the evening and in those off-peak hours. And the proposal they're putting forward doesn't necessarily address that. Um, so there are a lot of details to still be seen on that. Um, they're working, I, I understand, through a framework agreement that might um, 
eventually get us to widening, but um, how those details play out and what is and what is the final agreement and it is really critical because if the agreement is written t um, such that um, making future widening difficult, if not impossible, then is that really the best investment we're making for Northern Marty, Virginia? We saw a lot of attention this past election in the state Senate races and in the, the House races, uh, a discussion about inside, inside the Beltway right. tolling on 66. And obviously the Republicans maintain control right. of the House and the Senate. Does that mean that part of the administration's proposal is dead? Well, I don't know. You know, that, that remains to be seen, I think. I think there is general agreement in the region that something needs to be done on inside the Beltway. Um, I think there are some very divergent views on what the right solution for inside the Beltway is. Um, but I think when you hear folks, you know, the Republican delegates and senators saying they were opposed to the tolling inside the Beltway, I don't think what you heard was opposition to changes to how inside the Beltway operates. I think it was more of a devil's in the details type situation. And what I've heard so far is that the administration does have some openness to you know, some, some dialogue on this and figuring out how to address that problem. Uh, because whatever we do outside the Beltway eventually ends when you get to the Beltway, right? So you're going to have to have some things that tie the outside the Beltway improvements into that inner area. And of course, 66 inside the Beltway ends at 395, which we just talked about is getting its own toll lane improvements. So again, we have to look at the whole thing as a network. And um, I'm sort of blessed in this regard at the, at the Transportation Authority. The Inside the Beltway project isn't our project, so I get to sit back and watch other people argue about it. Marty Noe, Nancy Heitschu, thank you so much. We'll take a quick break right here, back with more News Talk right after this.